It is wedding season. It started in March. It really started for me. Yeah. Does wedding season start in March? I would like to think that March 1st is basically the beginning of wedding, wedding season. I yeah. think, you know, you have your occasional winter wedding, like a uh, Christmas or a New Year's wedding. You ever gone to a, a wedding on New Year's Eve? No, I haven't, actually. Is that, to, have you? I went to one, and I got to tell you, man, that is the greatest way to spend your New Year's Eve. You don't have to make plans. Right. All your friends are there. Yeah. Uh, you're already dressed up. Dressed up. Free drinks, I'm assuming. <laughs> free drinks. Yeah. Incredible. You don't uh, have to spend that weird freaking, like, when everybody's like, what are we doing for New Year's? Oh, my God, yeah. we have to do something. And then they're like, well, we have to pay $100 just to get in this door here. I know. And so they, that's really cool. Yeah, but but wedding season, I believe, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think wedding season runs from like March 1st to October 30th. Okay. Okay. You know, like end of fall, beginning of spring. Right. So uh, I'm going to give everybody out there a little uh, little peek behind the veil. I'm going to use Josh McCuga here as my uh, confidant and, mm-hmm. uh, and or I'm going to get advice from him. We're going to talk about what it's like planning a wedding from the male perspective because sometimes <laughs> – that's what it's including, like. Including, <laughs> yes. We're just, cl- like, I'm already batting zero here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's incredible how I've already failed my fiance uh-huh, at every turn. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and uh-huh. I'm trying. And oh, I dude. told her last night, I said, I'm trying. I'm making you dinner right now. And she went, making me dinner has nothing to do with wedding planning. And I go, but, I, but I'm cool, right? I'm doing it. So anyways, I wanted to get your advice on this because – I'm clueless. Okay. Here we go. And so was I. And so were you. And we are on – like we, we're, we're looking at a date right now. Okay. Fall. Fall, okay. October, okay. and or first weekend of November. Okay. Depending on I mean, how it works LA out. LA is fine. And LA is fine, yeah. And we're – you know, and already we'll get into the weather mm-hmm. because that's already like – she's already looking at the weather. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and she's like – She have an almanac? She doesn't have an almanac. She's just going to the internet, the tried and true internet here. And sending trends, weather trends? Uh, I don't think so. But she better. I mean <laughs> we better start doing that. You can't like predict weather 10 months out. But what you yeah. can do and what Amanda did was she, there's like this – I guess it's the farmer's almanac of sorts and it like tracks weather and like weather patterns during the year and like gives you percentages of possible weather dates on your day. And I will say this. When we were planning the wedding, we – and then you were at the wedding. A lot of people – if you follow me on – or even Riley on Twitter, Instagram, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd see a lot of pictures from our wedding. And um, it's gorgeous. That oh, was an amazing day. And we got married outside and with no yeah. contingency plan at all if there was bad weather. Just no yeah. contingency plan at all. We just we just ripped it. We just ripped the ripcord and we were praying and hoping that it would be beautiful. And at that time of year when we got married and we were lucky enough to get the venue when we did and everything, that, that 90% of the time over the last 60 years based on the Farmer's Almanac, the weather was pretty much perfect. Yeah. Okay. And all right. I was like thinking the other one. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, you got real lucky. No, no, no. So about four or five months away from our wedding maybe even longer Mm. because that time so we got married december 11th december 11th yes Uh, Uh, december 11th of of 2016 you got got engaged engaged what did did i say married okay i was like no 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 no, no. i was there it wasn't it wasn't december was it (laughs) i was gonna go with it and be just like i'm fucking stupid uh no so uh we got engaged december 11th Mm -hmm. and i told my wife i said let's just we're gonna go to pittsburgh for christmas let's just enjoy this engagement and we'll start planning the wedding january 2nd 3rd okay we'll start looking at it by December 19th, we had a venue picked out. We had things in the mix. Like Amanda was not waiting. She was like, wow. she went straight for it. Yeah. Uh, and that's just my wife. She loves she loves planning parties. She loves planning. She likes putting together events. She likes designing things. She likes all of that. She really, really enjoyed the whole thing. Yeah, I can see that. To a point. <laughs> <laughs> because, Mark, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm taking notes, by the way. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lay planning planning a wedding. Mm. And, and this is for those, and no offense to you, being that this is your second marriage. I don't know how you're doing it again, though it's been, I'm I, sure, I, a totally different experience on these two. I'll get into that because this is very important for you out there, perhaps, that are getting married for a second time, maybe a third, yeah. maybe a fourth. If it's a fifth time, stop. <laughs> Just not going to work. Quit it. Just quit. <laughs> so, I'm kidding for all you fi- <laughs> fifth timers out there, all you six timers. Who knows? Uh, so Please continue. No. So um, so we, we got engaged and the wedding just got off with gangbusters. I mean, Amanda went crazy. And, and at this point, listen, man, you're in the early stages of it. Whatever mm. you do, just don't fight it. Yeah. And I, I told myself there was two things I was going to pick a battle on. 
And that okay. was it. Oh. My only battle that I picked was that I wanted a, I wanted to, Jesus, <laughs> I, how does Christian stay? Uh, I know. It's I wanted, weird. I wanted to design the suit. Oh yeah. Okay. Which I did. And a lot of people have seen that suit. I fucking love that suit. That's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to design the suit and I wanted to be heavily involved in picking out the music and how the like reception went. These sound like very Josh McCuga things. Right. Yeah. That's, that's it. I don't even know what I want to be involved in yet. Right. Because I'm still, it's all happening because it's a, a little backstory. We do get engaged. Um, you know, I, I was one who congratulations on making the step. It's a beautiful thing. It's I, a beautiful I, it's, thing. As, as terrible as wedding planning is. Mm. And I look at it like pledging, which you and I both did. We yes, pledged we fraternity. Did. It's the best time of your life. You never want to do again. Exactly. That was my thought about pledging mm-hmm. and that, to this day. I'll look back and pledging and have like nightmarish chills mm-hmm. and think, God, that was terrible. And have like anxiety thinking about going to the house on like a Friday night being like, Oh God, this is good. Oh, yeah. But at, on the flip token of that is it was so funny looking back on pledging. It's amazing, right? Right. Same thing as wedding planning. Mm. I think about it. I'm like, I'm going to throw myself off a bridge. But at the same time, I was like, it led up to one of the greatest, if not the greatest day of my life. Yeah. And uh, I had to, to go back a little bit on that, um, you know, and commenting on the fact that this is my second wedding. The first wedding <clears throat> was awful. Yeah. Like in the planning, mm-hmm. not, I mean, you could probably uh, d- kind of surmise deduce. that it, it was deduced that it was not awful, but I mean, there's a reason why we're divorced and mm-hmm. now I'm with uh, who I'm with right now. And because of my first experiences with that wedding planning, um, I'm going in a little different. Mm-hmm. I'm going in a lot more um, understanding. I'm going a lot more loose okay. and I'm going in really just looking into my fiance and going, seriously, babe, what can I do to support you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. But I also have my opinions on things because the first wedding, uh, again, pulling back the veil, was a horse and pony show. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most insane, expensive weddings I've ever been to. And I was a part of it. That was it. That that was it. It was ridiculous. It was um, like, I can't even imagine. Let me ask you a personal question. If you (laughs) You never saw the bill because the the wife's dad took care of it. The wife's dad took care. Well, he took care of the venue. And then it was like my family. And this is why they're a little gun shy right now in in the help department. They are going to help. But it was my family also did a lot of help. Mm. And then the shitty thing was, um, it, it, it wasn't really couched that way in some of the speeches. It was like I was really thanking my family and a lot of people were thinking the, the other one. And it was like, hey, it was a kind of a group effort yeah. because it was so expensive. Like I felt like my parents got a little left behind mm-hmm. in the thanks department. But that's water under the bridge. They okay. really did help. But whew, it was expensive and, yeah. and just out there. Personal question. I'll answer. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't ask. <laughs> do it. Okay. It's, it's that kind of Riley Roundtable today. Do, do you think that there were multiple people in your wedding that were like, this isn't going to work? Probably. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you at any point during the planning think, let's call this thing off? <sighs> or were you just blinded by the light, wrapped up like a douche, another runner in the night? Yeah, kind of that. Um, I was having my, my ifs and my buts and my uh oh shits mm-hmm. uh, as I was leading into it because – but at the same point, the wedding planning kind of masked all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I actually had – here's – yeah, let's get personal. Fuck okay. it. Uh, I had one of my groomsmen and one of my dear friends um, before I was even engaged mm-hmm. came to me and he said, you're making a huge mistake. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Hmm. I listened to him. Do I know this person? Uh, you've probably met him. Okay. Yeah, it's my friend Chris. Okay. I don't know. You know, he's probably going to be in my wedding. So, okay. um, uh, and he was right, but he was also, I think, you know, we've had this conversation. We maybe had it on live. Mm-hmm. Your buddy's significant other. Do you want to say anything? You don't go down that road. Do you get? That's a very interesting question. What are your? What's your opinion on that? Well, I wasn't at your wedding. No, you weren't. But uh, and that we I didn't I, know you then. Yeah. No, no, no. I, we weren't even friends. Uh, yeah. we, we I didn't even know each other existed. Right. Uh, I I met you what like two months after your divorce, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just going through just it. Just going through it. Mm-hmm. So it is a very very delicate line to t- to teeter on it's yeah. to walk to that line in the sense of if i say something now and then they get married and later on they stay together forever he may tell his wife in the heat of passion or something like that and we i may never see this guy again or he's always going to look at me the guy that doesn't like my wife and this is always going to be a situation but if i'm right i don't want to be right because i don't want to be right because it's going to hurt my friend yes there's no win win in no. this it's a lose lose situation correct